City Troy Hills, regular Township Council meeting of September the 19th, 2023. Introduction. Posting of notice. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in accordance with the requirements of the Open Public Meetings Law by filing the notice in the office of the Township Clerk and by posting the meeting notice on the bulletin board at the Municipal Building on December the 21st, 2022 where it has remained posted since that date. A legal notice appeared in the daily record and the Newark Star Ledger on December the 28th, 2023. Would you please stand? Councilman Neglia, would you please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Mr. Manning, may we have the roll call, please? Yes, Council President. Mr. Carifi? Here. Mr. DePiro? Here. Mr. Musella? Here. Mr. Neglia? Here. Ms. Grignani? Yes, here. Also in attendance are Mayor James Barberio, Business Administrator Jamie Crine, Township Attorney Michael Lavery, and Township Clerk Colette Madden. Council President, we have a quorum. You may begin. Thank you. Upcoming meetings. October the 3rd, 2023 at 7 p.m. will be an agenda meeting. October the 17th, 2023 at 7 p.m. will be our regular meeting. Councilman DePierre. Approval of minutes, agenda meeting 8823 and our regular meeting 82223. Motion to approve the minutes above by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. DePiro, seconded by Mr. Neglia. Roll call. Mr. Caripi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. And Ms. Grignani. Yes. The motion passes. Presentations and reports. Mayor yeah. Barbario. I'll come back up from the report. Tom Ward, come up. So Frank, you want to just uh, come up and give a little what this is for? Okay. You can. Actually, can you read on the So the Pacific Troy Hills Economic Development Committee it's not would like to sit on. It's not working. Until we get the mic. It goes on and off, so we have to the back. The Detroit Hills Economic Development Advisory Committee would like to thank Todd Ward from Newmark. Todd played a crucial role in helping Gilead Science secure a lease for 96,391 vacant office space in the latitude located at 379 Interpace Parkway. Todd joined New Newmark in 2019 and currently serves as the director of the company's Rutherford office. Ms. Ward's expertise includes mixed use projects where he works closely with ownership, architects, engineers, and land use attorneys to create the most value for his clients and pride in Parsippany. I also have a plaque for David Simpson, who could not be here tonight, so I'll be giving it to Todd to bring back to him. I talk. Yeah, I'll get it to work. So, Tom, if you come up for a moment, we have a certificate of recognition that certifies and is proudly presented to Todd Ward. I, James R. Barbera, the mayor of the township for Sippin' Troy Hills, would like to congratulate you on your tremendous contribution to securing Gilead Sciences as part of Porcipity's business community, awarded this 22nd day of August 2023. Now, why the Gilead means a lot to me. Now, when I was at the event, I explained why. Um, they did do a lot of cancer research. And when I was here, when I was growing up here in Parsippany, and I think this should be known, and we said it, um, I had a brother who was 10 years old at the time, I was nine, and um, he died of a brain tumor at the age of 10. And Gilead is, you know, specializes in that. And I really appreciate bringing a company like that here to Parsippany. So thank you, and this is for you. And congratulations.
I'd like to call up Sal Pocha. Certificate of Recognition. This certificate is proudly presented to Sal Salvatore Pocia. I, James R. Barbera, the mayor of the township for Sibling Troy Hills, would like to congratulate you on your tremendous contribution to the community as you reach the milestone of five gallons of lifetime blood donations. It is inspiring to contemplate the many lives you have touched with your generous life-saving donations and I encourage others to follow your example of selflessness. Awarded this 12th day of September 2023, even though it wasn't, it isn't, but that's when he went and uh, drew blood again. I guess he's our, our, our vampire here, right? <laughs> well, I've got to tell you, Mayor, it's been so many years doing it. Our township's been so supportive for each of us to give blood. One donation saves three lives, and our blood count is so desperately low. Take advantage of going. Not much I could do to save anyone, but I guess my blood saves people. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 I want to have the glasses. Oh, I don't know. 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 I um, we had a meeting with uh, a town hall meeting with the Mount Tabor residents. Kevin, good to see you again. With regards to the um, lead copper rule, uh, pipe rule, we had our water superintendent there, uh, John Will Walker, and the assistant, uh, Sean Andrews. And we went over and we discussed uh, the possibilities of what's going to happen over there. And the, the, the residents were really receptive. We also had our chief there, our traffic uh, expert there, we had DPW there, um, and our, tr our, our township engineer for any other questions they want. It was like a town hall meeting. A lot of questions went back and forth, but it was really, really, really helpful for the residents. And I want to thank Mount Tabor for letting me uh, have the time to explain uh, the copper lead rule, whatever you want to call it, lead copper rule, that the, the EPA imposed on towns, but also the NJDEP enhanced it to make it not just lead, but to make it galvanized pipes. And as you know, most of Mount Tabor is galvanized pipes. So uh, we didn't want it to be a burden on the residents. So we, as you know, you guys did an ordinance with regards for corrective measures that would help the residents out and it would be up to them if they wanted to opt in or opt out on anything that we would do to repair um, over there, to, to, to change everything to uh, copper. Um, as you know, and you've been reading on social media, the bar, uh, Route 46 over there by Smithfield, uh, another individual crossed over and uh, landed on the football field and stuff like that. So what I did was I reached out to the, um, the chief, not the chief, well, the, the active chief reached out to the NJDOT. They're going to be coming down to do a study, a traffic study in that area because it's not a township road. It's a state road, and they govern the state roads. We govern the uh, township, road, township uh, roads. 
but we also had our traffic division is going to be looking into it and coordinate with the uh, NJDOT for safety measures. Now, when you read social media, of course, you get you get escalated, you get different opinions, you get a whole bunch of stuff. Um, that 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 area over there has never had anything like that happen before for years until this year. Actually, you had two incidents. So we're going to be doing a tra traffic uh, pattern study over there with regards to what's happening, looking to put barriers up. But of course, the state has to approve the barriers. The state is the one that's going to have to do it. So we're going to be coordinating ourselves with them as well. I'll give you an update on Mountain Way and Meadow Bluffs Road. As you know, when I, I read my last report with regards to speeding on those roads, um, and we said that we would put the barriers, uh, not the barriers, the boxes back in for speeding when school started. Those boxes will be picked up tomorrow and they will be assessed and, and I will have a report and we will be reaching out to the residents over there, which there's one individual, I can't remember the name, Annie Chandy, I think it is, yes. uh, that we did reach out to in July and we're going to give them recommendations what can go there. And as you know, uh, that road is very wide and the, the wider the road is, it seems like more people speed. But like I said the last time, there was 13,000, I think it was on Middle Road, there was 13,600 um, cars that went through that area and the average speed was 28 miles per hour, which is three miles over the speed limit. And then on Mountain Way, there was 13,700 uh, vehicles that uh, passed that road and the average speed was 33 miles uh, per hour. So. Um, it doesn't seem to be much speeding, but any speeding in roads like that and residentials is, you know, pretty much not what we want to see happen. Um, I, I got to tell you, the summer concert, the last summer concert that we had, was was packed. It was really good. Not not only was it good that the vendors there for the farmers market were really really excited on the outcome. There was lines. There was you know for, for the farmers. But it was probably the most packed concert that we had. So what I'm going to do next year is I'm going to move the, the actual concerts all to Friday night. So every concert will be Friday night. We won't have a Thursday night and a Friday night because, you know, everyone seems to um, gravitate to the Friday night because nobody works the next day. Right, let me see what else I have here. That's really it. That's all I have to report. So thank you. Um, Just a quick question for you, Mayor. Is there any thought about, uh, and I appreciate the update, is there any thought about putting up a temporary barrier in the meantime while DOT does a study? That would be up to the DOT. Um, we, we, um, the, the captain or chief reached out to the DOT today to, to do the temporary, uh, to possibly do temporary barriers. I think that's what they would do anyway when they do a study. They would come down and they would see if it's necessary. If they, they deem it to not be necessary, they're not going to put they're not going to put any barriers up. That's and I've learned that with the state of New Jersey. And I'll give you an example. Uh, you know, I have the fence on 46 by Shoprite. Well, a lot of residents want us to take that fence down. Okay, so we contacted the DOT to take if they would take it down. The problem was. The fact that the prior administration, not this one, the one before I became mayor the first time around, uh, recommended it for public safety. So the state said, we'll take it down, but then all responsibilities would be on the township. So if somebody crossed over and got hit and killed, it would be the township's responsibility because we told them that we wanted the fences down. So our GIF, the Joint Insurance Fund, told us they did not recommend it to get down. Well, the state's going to decide on the barriers. But what we're trying to do is to see, because some of that property is town property. So we might want to put up some, uh, not those orange, big, big orange barriers, because they're, they're not really aesthetically um, appealing. But put the, the, I guess they call them pole barriers. Uh, yeah, something like that uh, up over there, because the last thing we want to see happen each time we were lucky that there were no games going on, number one. Number two, the first time was the first day of the summer program for the kids. And it was it rained, thank God it rained, because they would have been on the field. So, you know, we're going to look at personary measures and possible barriers ourselves. Thank you, Mayor. Judge of Council? Yeah, and I appreciate the Mayor addressing one of the points that I was going to make. 
Um, I would just say just, you know, next time that we have uh, an incident like we did last week with a missing person and we had uh, state police helicopters circling Persephone, if we can maybe just inform residents while that's going on because I can't be the only one that was inundated with phone calls while that was happening. So just wanted to provide that feedback. So, so what happens with that is we can, we can only, we're limited because it's the Morris County Prosecutor's Office that puts that message out. We can't put no messages out from what I understand unless they, like a missing person, for example, and that's what this was at one point. Mm -hmm. um, it's the Morris County Prosecutor's Office that will put it out and they tell us what we have to print, what we have to do. So we wanted to put the information out. We really wanted to, but sometimes you just can't until you get to go ahead from them. And they're the ones that put out the information. And then we took that and we shared it amongst all social media. Thank you. Anyone else? <clears throat> Mr. Lavery, Township Attorney. Uh, no report this evening, Council President. Business Administrator, Mr. Cryan. Thank you, Council President. Uh, just real quickly, a uh, couple of things. Um, Fall Festival. Uh, I don't know if you mentioned the Fall Festival there. No, I didn't. The Fall Festival is happening on uh, Sunday, October 1st, um, 12 noon to 5 p.m. North Beverly Road. Um, should be a great time. Hopefully, you all can make it. Um, Farmer's Market is still ongoing till October 27th. It's been very successful. Um, please uh, uh, try to get there. Uh, you know, fall is a great season to hit a farmer's market. Um, the 2023 Sokolowski Senior Citizen of the Year Awards. Uh, uh, the Parsippany Office of Aging is accepting applications for the 2023 uh, Senior Citizen of the Year Award for two resident volunteers who are age 60 and over. Um, the deadline is September 30th. Uh, there's information on our website or you can call the uh, Health and Human Services Department. The, um, on a, uh, October 3rd, we will be starting um, registration for the uh, annual trunk and treat at Veterans Park. So uh, more information will be coming in the next uh, few weeks. Please look out for that on our website or on our Facebook page. And um, that is all I have, Mayor. Just President, thank you. Thank you. Can I add one more thing? I'm sure. sorry, I meant to read my report. We just uh, last week we closed out the application process for police officers. Uh, we have five officers retiring, and we're going to replace them with five new new hires. So the process is starting. Actually, started today. They will be interviewing, and then hopefully sometime in January, of the first our first meeting, we're going to swear in another five police officers. Okay. And what uh, what? number does that bring us into it it's the so. same number because the, we're only replacing only retirees replacing, we're not adding right so next year's budget we're going to decide how we want to move forward okay thank you ma'am yep thank you mr crying township clerk mr mad uh no report at this time council president mm -hmm. thank you township officers committees reports engineering report 2021 road resurfacing curb and sidewalk program. The annual road resurfacing curb and sidewalk project is on hold pending negotiations with the contractor. No council action required. Rockaway River flood wall levy inspection. Our consultant is working on preparing design details and cost estimate for the maintenance and repair work to the flood wall and levy. Recent site inspections were made to aid the design and repairs. Once the design and necessary permitting is complete, the project will be advertised for bid. No council action required. North Beverick Road Streetscape Project Phase 1. The bids for the first phase of the North Beverick Road Streetscape were opened May 3rd, 2023, and the total bid prices were significantly higher than budgeted. We are rebidding the project in September and look to award it in the October meeting. No council action required. 2023 Road Resurfacing Curb and Sidewalk Program. The annual Road Resurfacing Curb and Sidewalk Project is in construction. Work is anticipated to be completed by the middle of September, no council action required. Mount Tabor Street Improvements Phase 7. Construction on the Mount Tabor Street Improvements Phase 7 project is ongoing. We anticipate work continuing through the end of September, no council action required. Drumlin Drive Stream Cleaning, NJDEP permits have been issued for the project. Our consultant is finishing in design and we will intend to build the project later this year, no council action required. Putting Stone Heights Road Improvement Project Phase 2. 
The second phase of Pudding Stone Heights road improvement project is in design. We anticipated bidding the project later this year, no council action required. Jefferson Road Improvements, we received a $760,000 NJDOT grant for improvements to Jefferson Road from Precipity Road to Smith Road. The improvements include the resurfacing of the roadway, minor intersection upgrades, and significant drainage improvements, particularly near the East Halsey Road intersection. Permit applications and plans are being prepared. The project will be bid once NJDEP permits have been issued. No council action required. Lake Intervale Area Street Improvements, the first phase of Lake Area Street Improvements project is in design. We anticipate bidding this project later this year. No council action required. Silver Way Culvert Improvements, we are working with our design professionals on the preparation of plans and the NJDEP permit application. We anticipate bidding this project in early 2024. No council action required. Roadway design projects, the following projects are in design where proposals have been requested. Troy Brook Stream Cleaning, Silver Way Sidewalk Improvements, River and Stream Desnagging Plans and Permits, Etten Roads Traffic Safety. No council action required. Thank you. There is no correspondence. There were no bids taken. Bids to be taken. 9-21-2023, Well Redevelopment Services of Wells 18 and 19 and Pumping, and pumping System Replacements for Wells 18 and 19. 9-27-2023, rebid North Bevwick Road streetscape plans. There are no quotations, proposals, or qualifications. Before I ask for a motion for the public session, I would like to make a comment. You are all welcome to speak for five minutes. After your five minutes, I ask you to please sit down if your questions or comments will be answered by the administration or our councilman, that will be their consideration. There will be no interaction between you, the speaker, and anyone else on this dais. Please, I'd like to have a, a meeting where we can all speak but speak with respect for one another. Thank you. May I have a motion to open the public session? Make a motion. Second. Second. A motion made by Mr. Karifi, seconded by Mr. Musella. Roll call, Mr. Karifi? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Mr. Musella? Yes. Mr. Neglia? Yes. Ms. Grignani? Yes. The floor is open to the public. You can speak on any matter. You have five minutes to speak. Please just state your name when you come up to the mic. Good evening, my name is Kevin Northover. I just want, I'm representing here the Mount, residents of Mount Tabor. I just wanted to add to the mayor's remarks earlier and uh, thank him and the administration. Okay, start again. Well, good evening, my name is Kevin Northover. I'm here to thank, on behalf of the residents of Mount Tabor, the mayor and his staff for the meeting we had last, uh, last Tuesday. It was very much appreciated by the residents. We had just over 70 attending, which for a meeting organized on less than a week's notice, I think is not bad at all. And uh, I had a number of very constructive comments back after that. It was very successful, and I think it did a lot for relationships with the town. So thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Yes, please. Anyone else would like to come up to speak? Nick Homiak, uh, Lake Hiawatha. Um, I'm interested to get some feedback from the council and the subject of uh, overlay uh, districts or zoning. And uh, from what I can see, Persephone only has affordable housing and uh, economic development uh, overlays. And I believe that we have eight vacant overlays but uh, 
Overlays are used commonly for environmental protection districts and historic uh, overlays. They're also to protect, uh, protect sensitive environmental features, uh, preserve historic buildings, prevent development on unstable or vulnerable land features. Uh, Overlay districts fill uh, gaps where traditional zoning does not address specific or complicated local conditions or multi-jurisdictional <laughs> issues. Uh, for example, a river shed along a river that flows in several different zoning districts and would protect along uh, land along the entire uh, river. So it seems that there's a great shortcoming in Persephone in, in them not having the overlays that I mentioned, uh, environmentally uh, sensitive areas or historic uh, districts. Now I see the sign on South Beverwick, it says historic district, but is that actually zoned that way? Is that an overlay? Because when I look in the ordinances, all I see is the economic development. I don't see anything for any other subject. Uh, so that I'm just curious about why why that is so. And it seems that you know that it caught up to us in a lot of ways, and especially with the pudding stone, that pretty sensitive and unique area. A beautiful place and now it's it's actually being threatened by a developer who seems not to care about the creed of why why people live there but if if it was somehow an overlay zone or recognized for for what what it actually is uh, not only ecologically and geographically but uh, a, a gem to the town so if I can get some kind of feedback on why we only have housing and economic overlays or zoning, and I'll I'll take my seat. Thank you, Nick. Would anyone on the council or administration care to answer questions? Yep. Go ahead, Mike. No, I mean I don't think Parsippany is much different from any other town. Usually, you have an overlay zone if you want senior housing in a certain zone. You, you want things in certain areas. COA certainly affordable housing, and it doesn't. I'm not saying it makes it right, but um, you know that's normally what you use overlay zones for. Is you have a specific zone that permits certain things, and then there might be something desirable or undesirable that you have to zone for, and you want them in certain areas of town. So you put overlay zone. Um, I haven't seen a lot of towns with environmental overlays. I'm sure they exist, but traditionally, that's what you use overlay zones for. When you have a state mandate that requires you to put certain things in certain neighborhoods, um, that's where you have it because you don't want to allow it throughout the entire zone. Mm -hmm. I know I'm sorry. I'm can't. sorry, Nick. My five minutes. It, it, no, you, you're up. Enough. I'm sorry, Nick. But my five minutes is not up. Well, Paul would have let me know. I you already sat back down. You sit down, Nick. Come on, let's. All right. It was just I just want to give one example of I'm where. I'm sorry. It, there's no interaction. All right, but Please my five stand. minutes is, is not up. So. Well then, next time stand up. Anyone else like to care to speak? Just let them know how many time how much time they have left. Okay. Hi, I'm Lucinda Crane. I'm from Puddingstone Heights. And um, we have a hearing um, with the zoning board coming up on September 27th. And we've shared letters with the mayor and the town councilman and with Peter King. And I brought the letters here and um, would like to address one section, one expert from the, ex from the uh, letters, which I feel is very important is how Oprah's are handled in this town. Can you speak into the, uh, on the other mic? That might be better for you since, okay. yeah, I'm sorry. We're having issues with the mics. Okay. So in our process of um, trying to um, find out more information about the Pudding Stone development and happening, which is happening on our hillside, our mountainside, we have um, found that there are significant gaps in reporting and official findings 
um, that could expose the town to much liability. We filed 33 OPA requests for all information related to the properties in question to include permit applications, notices of approvals, letters of resolution, and maps and plans dating back to 1998 to the present. While there is some information obtained from microfilm records going back several years, there is no information in the documents provided that showed that they would be approved in 2003. Document approvals should be included with all maps showing just limits of dis, um, disturbance, um, size and placement of retaining walls, soil movement, expected location of the two homes to be built on lots 4510, 4511, and um, they should be given to the Township Planning Board, Engineer Planner, and other relevant entities. During the July 19th hearing with um, both Mr. O'Neill and Mr. McLennan, we, they made references to a better and alternative way of um, building, but they did not have the current plans with them at the time. And no one had seen the current plans for 2000 uh, that they had shared in the meeting for um, uh, that were dated April 11th, 2023. No one had seen these plans and they were entered um, at our hearing and um, they could not answer any questions regarding these plans. At a request, to, it was made to the township to find all plans, permit application, letter, letters of, of resolution, relevant information to uh, document exactly what was approved around 2003 relating to the lots and to make these documents available no later than September 7th to anyone who submits an OPRA request for this information. This information should also be provided by the town to the township engineer and the planner to review so that they can help with the board of adjustment to prepare for an informed discussion regarding the application at the next hearing on this application. In addition, a request was made to the township to include information that shows that the original permits, if in fact granted, have been correctly attained and renewed to the current date. In the event that this information cannot be found, it is our belief that the township must conclude that no current valid permits exist for these properties. In that case, any application for variances on these properties must be considered entirely based on current regulations. My question to the town council is that our, our team in our neighborhood has completed 33 OPRA requests and this information has not been provided to our team to review and the um, Mr. O'Neill and Mr. McLennan at the last hearing presented uh, Ma'am, you have 30 seconds. Plans for 2003. No one saw the plans for April 11th, 2023. And um, there seems to be an issue with town OPRA uh, reports and we still have not received all of the OPRA information on these on this development. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I, I would just say, and, and you probably already know this, that we have to be very careful, the mayor and council, because the zoning board is a quasi-judicial board, so there can't be any political influence, you know, and you don't want that just in case there's a denial there, because then they can allege that the council or the mayor were somehow involved. In towns that have a land use board, which is a combined zoning and planning board, the elected officials actually have to step down, you know, because the mayor or his designee is on the planning board, and then you have your class four, so or class two member. So they can't have anything. Elected officials can't have anything to do with the matter in front of the zoning board. So the Oprah issues that you have are totally separate. So that needs to be addressed. And I will just tell you frankly that anytime an application is filed, all the documents that seek to be entered 
are supposed to be there 10 days before on file so that the public can review them. So it sounds like that is a problem there. But as far as commenting on a pending application in front of the zoning board, I would just caution the mayor and council that it wouldn't be proper for us to comment on the merits of that application. The OPA requests and the amount of time it takes or the fact that those documents aren't there, that's another story. Sid, what? Certainly all those things, all of the documents that they're going to rely on at a hearing should be there 10 days before for the public to be able to review. When were the 33 requests filed, ma'am? Starting in uh, April. April of 23? Or sooner. And they were filed all by you or by numerous members? Numerous members of our neighborhood plus environmental groups. And they were requesting. Okay, and they were requesting information pertaining uh, to this uh, pudding stone development, correct? Correct. And you did receive information, but you did not receive all the information, is what you're stating? No, we did not. Okay. And uh, when you didn't receive that information, did you contact uh, the clerk's office? Yes, we did. Okay, and what was the response? Um, that we had received everything. Okay. And that um, there was nothing left on record. Okay. And uh, in April of um, 11, this other document from Putting Stone Developers was submitted, and no one saw this document until the hearing in July of uh, our last hearing was July 19, 2023. Okay. And what was your name again for the record, ma'am? My name was Lucinda Crane. Lucinda Crane. Ms. Crane, thank you for your time. Okay. Thank you. Hello, my name is Jess Becker and I reside at Pudding Stone Heights at 12 High Ridge Road. I would just like to read into record tonight the letter that I did send to the mayor's action team because I think that it sums up the feelings that I have about the project and what's been happening. Um, I do understand what you're saying that you guys cannot weigh in on what's going on, what the zoning board decides. However, as an appointed board, I would urge you to take a look at what they are doing and what's going on with the zoning board because if you do have the power to appoint them, there are some people on the board who I don't think have the best interest <coughs> of the town at hand. So I'd just like to read my letter if I can. Dear Mayor Barbario, I am writing concerning an issue that the Pudding Stone community has been faced with. I know you are aware of the application for a variant C that Mr. Mossberg's son-in-law and partners are seeking. I am sure that you have noticed the Save the Ridge signs around town. The residents of Pudding Stone Heights and surrounding neighborhoods have been working diligently to save and protect the beautiful landscape and mature forest on the ridge. Many of us, especially the Pudding Stone Action Team, have spent many hours equivalent to a part-time job on researching documents, permits, plans, etc. concerning the ridge and remaining undisturbed lots. Various OPA requests have turned up numerous documents. However, there are still some requested by professionals that we consulted that are missing. I'm not sure why that is, but that has been the case. Ms. Jolie has been very helpful in trying to provide what we have asked for and has given us all that we had. Then at the July hearing, the developer's attorney presented plans dated 2023. The most recent plans that the zoning board and the opposition had were plans dated 2021. I was shocked that the hearing could continue because the zoning board and opposition did not have time to review the current plans and the improvements that they claim were made. But the hearing continued and time had run out, carrying us over to the next hearing date. At our last hearing on July 19, 2023, the Zoning Board of Adjustments announced there would be a special hearing here at Town Hall on August 9th to release the date of the next hearing. I attended that meeting as a representative of the Pudding Stone Action Team to hear the new date announced. A new date of September 27th was announced. Upon returning to my neighborhood and sharing the date with my neighbors and supporters, I quickly learned that the neighbors Mike Riskin and Michelle Ruggiero and their attorney were not available on that date. 
Mike and Michelle are scheduled to be out of the country on their honeymoon, and their attorney had a previously scheduled vacation during that time. Mike and Michelle let us know that they intended to speak to, to their attorney about the matter. Recently, Mike and Michelle forwarded a message to the action team to share with us that their attorney, Ron Heyman, had requested an adjournment since he and his clients were not able to attend. The zoning board refused to grant this adjournment. Perhaps the most upsetting comment was that the opposition is of no matter to the zoning board. I am extremely surprised that the zoning board would make such a statement, considering that some of the men and women who serve on the board truly appear to want what's best for the town and ask relevant and important questions of applicants and their experts at hearings. One gentleman opened up the hearing in July stating that he hoped to understand what Save the Ridge meant to all the people who would come out to oppose the variance and fight for Pudding Stone. A statement such as that does not imply that the opposition is of no matter to the board. I consulted with professionals on my own to ask for pro bono advice and they shared with me that while the applicant is paying for the application and the hearing, the zoning board must allow the public and opposition a fair chance to question the applicant's experts and make statements. Therefore, I do not understand why the attorney for the zoning board of adjustments would not ask the developer to carry the hearing to a date already set aside for October. If the developer's attorney will need to bring back any witnesses who testify and are questioned at the September hearing in October in order to allow for the, my neighbors and their attorney to question those witnesses again, would it not be in the best interest of all parties to adjourn to the October hearing? 30 seconds, ma'am. I'm writing to you today, our mayor's action team, because on the few occasions that I met you, you were very kind-hearted and I could tell that you do believe that Parsippany is a great place to live. If you care about the residents of our township and you want to keep pride in Parsippany, I urge you to stand up for the ridge, let the opposition be heard, and do what it takes to make sure our trees, nature, and environment, and quality of life are protected. And I ask that you please speak to the board attorney. However, I do know that you cannot do that. So I'll not continue reading that part of my letter. But again, please keep in mind the way the zoning board behaves and they're treating the town people of the township and the opposition. And when it's time to vote for those members of the zoning board, I would hope that you take into consideration how they treat the residents. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I, I'd just like to say one thing with regards to um, nothing to do with the application, because like you said, it's a pending application and it wouldn't be proper. But I do want to make one thing clear that the planning board, uh, you mentioned planning board in the beginning and zoning board are separate. Uh, the planning board is all appointed by the mayor and the zoning board is appointed by the council. I'm not throwing it on to the council. I'm just trying to tell you know, it, it, the example of what it means. Uh, basically, there's no jurisdiction for the mayor when it comes to the zoning board. I just want to make that clear. But I, I did, I did read your letter. I, you know, in in protection of Pudding Stone, that's why I don't make my comments because it is a pending application, and I do not want to put the zoning board or I want to put the residents in a bad situation. Thank you. Anyone else would like to get up to speak? See no one else. Make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Motion made by <clears throat> Mr. Karifi, seconded by Mr. Musella. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Mr. Grignani. Yes. Door is closed. Ordinance 2023-20, an ordinance of the Township Council of the Township of Sipany, Troy Hills, County of Morris, State of New Jersey, amending Chapter 430, Zoning Section 430-267, <coughs> Development Regulation of the Code of the Township of Sipany, Troy Hills. Be it resolved that the above ordinance be introduced, read by title, and passed on first reading at a meeting of the Township Council of the Township of Sipany, Troy Hills, held on September 19, 2023, and that said ordinance be Further considered for a second reading and final passage at a meeting to be held on October 17, 2023 at 7 p.m. prevailing time or as soon thereafter as the matter may be reached at the municipal building in said township at which time all persons interested shall be given an opportunity to be heard concerning said ordinance. B. It further resolved that the clerk be authorized and directed to advertise said ordinance 
with notice of introduction thereof being published in the official newspaper according to law. Motion to approve the above resolution by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Neglia, seconded by Mr. Karifi. Roll call. Mr. Karifi. Yes. Mr. Shapiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. Motion passes. Ordinance 2023, colon 21. An ordinance of the Township Council of the Township of Parsippany, Troy Hills, adopting the Block 737, Lot 3, redevelopment plan. Be it resolved that the above ordinance be introduced, read by title, and passed on first reading at a meeting of the Township Council of the Township of Parsippany, Troy Hills, held on September 19, 2023, and that said ordinance be further considered for second reading and final passage at a meeting to be held on October 17th, 2023 at 7 p.m. prevailing time, or as soon thereafter as a matter may be reached at the municipal building in said township, at which time all persons interested shall be given an opportunity to be heard concerning said ordinance. We have further resolved that the clerk be authorized and directed to advertise said ordinance with the notice of introduction there being published in the official newspaper according to law. Motion to approve the above resolution by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. DePiro, seconded by Mr. Neglia. <laughs> Roll call. Mr. Karifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Mr. Nyan. Yes. Motion passes. Ordinance 2023 colon 22. An ordinance of the Township Council of the Township of Precipity Troy Hills adopting the Six Sylvan Way development plan be it resolved that the above ordinance be introduced, read by title, and passed on first reading at a meeting of the Township Council of the Township of Precipity Troy Hills held on September 19th, 2023, and that said ordinance be further considered for second reading and final passage at a meeting to be held on October 17th, 2023 at 7 p.m. prevailing time or soon thereafter as the matter may be reached at the municipal building in said township, at which time all persons interested shall be given an opportunity to be heard concerning said ordinance. Be it further resolved that the clerk be authorized and directed to advertise said ordinance with the notice of introduction thereof being published in the official newspaper according to law. Motion to approve the above resolution by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Karifi, seconded by Mr. Neglia. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. Motion passes. Ordinance 2023, colon 10. An ordinance of the Township Council of the Township of Parsippany, Troy Hills, County of Mar, State of New Jersey, amending Chapter 430, zoning, Article uh, 15, wireless telecommunications of the Code of the Township of Parsippany, Troy Hills. The notice for Ordinance 2023, colon 10, was published in the Daily Record, the official newspaper of the Township of Parsippany, Troy Hills, on August 28, 2023, and introduced at the August 22nd, 2023 regular meeting. Motion to accept Ordinance 2023, colon 10, be heard in their second and final reading by title only. Made by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Musella, seconded by Mr. Karifi. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. Public hearing. Motion to open the public hearing for Ordinance 2023, colon 10, made by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Musella, seconded by Mr. Karifi. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. Floor is open to the public only on this ordinance. You have five minutes to speak. Seeing no one. Make a motion to close the public hearing. For Second. Order. Motion made by Mr. Musella, seconded by Mr. Karifi. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. And Ms. Grignani. Yes. Floor is closed. Whereas the above ordinance was read in title on second reading and a hearing held thereon, now therefore be it resolved that said ordinance be passed on final reading and that notice of final passage of said ordinance be published in the newspaper according to law. Motion to approve the resolution above for Ordinance 2023, colon 10, made by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Musella, seconded by Mr. Karifi. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. Motion passes. Ordinance 2023, colon 11, an ordinance of the Township Council, Township of Precipitant Troy Hills, County of Morris, State of New Jersey, amending Chapter 430, zoning... Section 430-8, terms defined of the Code of the Township of Troy Hills. 
The notice for Ordinance 2023-11 was published in the Daily Record, the official newspaper of the township of Sydney Troy Hills, on August 28, 2023, and introduced at the August 22, 2023, regular meeting. Motion to accept Ordinance 2023-11 to be heard, and their second and final reading by total only by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Neglia, seconded by Mr. Carifi. Roll call, Mr. Carifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Rusella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Mr. Grignani. Yes. Motion to open the public hearing for Ordinance 2023 column by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Neglia, seconded by Mr. Carifi. Roll call, Mr. Carifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Rusella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Mr. Grignani. Yes. Floor is open to the public. You have five minutes to speak on this ordinance only. You want to, uh, this is Ordinance uh, 2023 colon 11. Anyone coming up? Okay, seeing no one. Motion to close the public hearing for Ordinance 2023 colon 11 by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Neglia, seconded by Mr. Carifi. Roll call, Mr. Carifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Mr. Grignani. Yes. Floor is closed. Whereas the above ordinance is read in title on second reading and hearing held hereon. Now, therefore, be it resolved that said ordinance be passed on final reading and that notice of final passage of said ordinance be published in the newspaper according to law. <coughs> Motion to approve the resolution above for ordinance 2023 colon 11 by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Neglia, seconded by Mr. Carifi. Roll call, Mr. Carifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. And Ms. Grignon. Yes. Motion passes. Ordinance 2023 colon 12, an ordinance of the Township Council of the Township of Parsippian Troy Hills, County of Morris, State of New Jersey, amending Chapter 430, Zoning, Section 430-277.1, Electric Vehicle Supply Service Equipment of the Code of the Township of Parsippian Troy Hills. The notice for Ordinance 2023 colon 12 was published in a daily record, the official newspaper of the Township of Parsippany Troy Hills on August 28th, 2023, and introduced at the August 22nd, 2023 regular meeting. Motion to accept Ordinance 2023, colon 12, be heard in their second and final reading by title only by myself. Second. Motion made by uh, Mr. DePiro, seconded by Mr. Neglia. Roll call, <coughs> Mr. Carifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Mr. Yes. Mr. Marcella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. Motion to open the public hearing on Ordinance 2023, colon 12, by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. DePiro, seconded by Mr. Neglia. Roll call. Mr. Uh, Carifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Mr. Grignani. Yes. Floor is open to the public. You have five minutes to speak on this ordinance only. Uh, uh, Nicholas Homiak, Lake Hiawatha. Could it be explained more? Uh, they're going to plan and implement, create actual electrical infrastructure for electrical vehicles. Yes. And, we'll, and well, we'll, there's, a, there's an ordinance already on the books now that does that. This says that they lack some markings for where those parking spaces are. So this puts in the requirement that they have to be marked at the curb. Uh, Etc. So there's an ordinance on the books now. This is just modifying it to say you have to have them clearly marked. So it's not going to include any work for the actual infrastructure. It's just a preliminary step. No, no. I think the original ordinance has that those items in it. This just says yeah. such parking space provide the pavement and the curb markings as required in F4A. And earlier it says that the earlier ordinance lacked requirements for identification and signage of the private uh, parking spaces. So, so this is just about marking that. Will this restrict a regular car from parking there? Will th there won't be any like a, a ticket or anything like that or because if there's no no electric vehicles. Are those your only questions? They, yeah and yeah. will the town is the town considering any of this for their vehicles be police or municipal vehicles at all? Not in this yeah, ordinance. Not this ordinance. Not in, all right. Okay. But, uh, Thank you, Mr. Holly. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? No. Okay, seeing no one. Motion to close the public hearing. Second. Motion made by Mr. DePiro, seconded by Mr. Neglia. Roll call. Mr. Carifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Mr. Grignani. Yes. 
Whereas the above ordinance was read in title on second reading, and a hearing held thereon. Now therefore be it resolved that said ordinance be passed on final reading, and that a notice of final passage of said ordinance be published in the newspaper according to law. Motion to approve the resolution above, ordinance 2023, column 12, by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. DePiro, seconded by Mr. Negley. A roll call. Mr. Caripi? Yes. Mr. DePiro? Yes. Mr. Micella? Yes. Mr. Neglia? Yes. Mr. Grignani? Yes. Ordinance 2023, colon 13, an ordinance of the Township Council of the Township of Precipitate Troy Hills, County of Morris, State of New Jersey, amending Chapter 430, Zoning Section 430-267, Development Regulations of the Code of the Township of Precipitate Troy Hills. The notice for Ordinance 2023, colon 13, was published in the Daily Record, the official newspaper of the Township of Precipitate Troy Hills, on August 28, 2023, and introduced at the August 22, 2023, Regular meeting. Motion to accept ordinance 2023 colon 13 be heard in their second and final reading by title only by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Karifi, seconded by Mr. Neglia. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Misella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Mr. Grignani. Yes. Motion to open up the public hearing for this ordinance and this ordinance only, made by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Karifi, seconded by Mr. Neglia. Roll call. Mr. Karifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Misella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Mr. Grignani. Yes. Floor is open on this ordinance only. You have five minutes to speak. Uh, Mr. Homniak, excuse me. Please state all of your questions first. So I, that it's it only a answer. question. I understand. And the question is, um, what, where, how... Are these residences, I don't understand where they're going to uh, be residential zones establishing. So is this new construction or I don't understand. Uh, it's like the home for battered women, but it, it's this. This covers all sorts of homes for developmentally disabled, etc. This is really just a statement of what the state law is. The original ordinance was passed in 1981, I believe, in Parsippany, but the law has changed since then, so this just updates it. Basically, they're permitted in every zone, that's state law, so our code section was behind, so this just brings it to what the state statute requires now. Does anything like that count for a, cr a credits or whatever, like affordable housing? Uh yeah, some of those, and I'm not an expert on code, but some of these you get like a two-for-one credit on some of these group homes. So the answer to your question is yes. On some of them, I, I couldn't sit here and tell you which ones, but yes. So, could you so, give an example oh, of? Hold on. You, you said you answered all. Your, you asked all your questions. Now you're going on your third one. <laughs> well, I said there will, will be questions. Could you give an example where uh, one of these homes it, it already exists or will exist? I can answer that question, Mr. Lavery. Sure. I live on Rhoda Terrace, and there is a development home on North Bevwick Road, right in back of my yard. Uh, they're developmentally handicapped individuals, and um, they have been there for several years, and uh, they have been an absolute <coughs> great neighbor. There is no problem uh, with anything or anyone in that, in that home. Yeah, I'm not worried about that. I was just wondering how it how it it works you know how it's established if there's if they exist already then yes yeah is there going to be more possibly know? yeah all right i, I don't care okay you know. <laughs> thank you okay motion to close second the open public. motion made by mr karifi seconded by uh, mr Musella. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Mr. Yes. Misella, yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. Floor is closed. Whereas the above ordinance was read and titled <clears throat> second reading and here held on thereon, now therefore be resolved that said ordinance be passed on final reading and that notice of final passage of said ordinance be published in the newspaper according to law. Motion to approve the resolution above for ordinance 2023 colon 13 by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Karifi, seconded by Mr. Neglia. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Mr. Grignani. Yes. Motion passes. Ordinance 2023, colon 14, an ordinance of the Township Council of the Township of Parsippany, Troy Hills, County of Morris, State of New Jersey, amending Chapter 430, zoning of the Code of the Township of Parsippany, Troy Hills, 
The notice for Ordinance 2023, colon 14, was published in the Daily Record, the official newspaper of the Township of Persephone, Troy Hills, on August 28, 2023, and introduced at the August 22, 2023, regular meeting. Motion to accept Ordinance 2023, colon 14, be heard in their second and final reading by title only, made by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Musella, seconded by Mr. Carifi. Roll call, Mr. Carifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. Public hearing. Motion to open the public hearing for Ordinance 2023, colon 14. Second. Motion made by Mr. Musella, seconded by Mr. Carifi. Roll call, Mr. Carifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. The floor is open to the public on this ordinance only. You have five minutes to speak. Seeing See, no one. No one, nobody come forward. Close the public session. Second. Motion made by Mr. Musella, seconded by Mr. Caripi. Roll call, Mr. Caripi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. Floor is closed. Whereas the above ordinance was read in title on second reading in a hearing held thereon, now therefore be it resolved that said ordinance be Pass on final reading and that notice of final passage of said ordinance be published in the newspaper according to law. Motion to approve the resolution above for ordinance 2023 colon 14 made by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Musella. Seconded by Mr. Carifi. Roll call, Mr. Carifi. Yes. Mr. Tiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Mr. Grignani. Yes. Motion passes. Ordinance 2023 colon 15, bought an ordinance providing for the purchase of various equipment for the golf utility of the township for Sippany Troy Hills in the county of Morris, state of New Jersey, the township, appropriating $216,000, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $205,710 bonds or notes to finance part of the cost thereof. The notice for ordinance 2023 colon 15 was published in the Daily Record the official newspaper of the Township for Sydney Troy Hills on August 29, 2023, an introduction at the August 22, 2023 regular meeting. Motion to accept Ordinance 2023, colon 15, be heard in their second and final reading by title only by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Neglia, seconded by Mr. Carifi. Roll call, Mr. Carifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Sella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Mr. Grignani. Yes. Motion to open the public hearing for Ordinance 2023, column 15, by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Neglia, seconded by Mr. Carifi. Roll call, Mr. Carifi. Yes. Mr. Piero. Yes. Mr. Sella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. The floor is open to the public on this ordinance only. You have five minutes to speak. Come on up if you have something to say. Nick? Just a question. <laughs> <laughs> Section 9, the township reasonably expects to reimburse any expenditures toward the cost of the improvements or purposes described in Section 3, the sprayers. So if the knoll is a utility unto itself, then why, what does it mean when the town reasonably expects to reimburse? How does that work? Is that I mean, what the taxpayers pay and, and Noel doesn't? Is that your only question? Yes. What is he reading from? Seeing no one else? Motion to close the public hearing for Ordinance 2023, column 15, made by myself. So I need a second. Second. Thank you. <clears throat> Motion made by Mr. Neglia, seconded by Mr. Karif. You roll call, Mr. Karif. Yes. Mr. DePiero. Yes. Mr. Sella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Mr. Grignani. Yes. Well, it's close to the public. Whereas the above ordinance was read in title on second reading and hearing and held hereon, now therefore be it resolved that said ordinance be passed on final reading and that notice of final passage of said ordinance be published in the newspaper according to law. Motion to approve the resolution above for ordinance 2023, column 15, by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Neglia, seconded by Mr. Carifi. Roll call, Mr. Carifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. Motion passes. Ordinance 2023, colon 16. Bond ordinance providing for various 2023 capital acquisitions and improvements for the township of Pacific Troy Hills in the county of Morris, state of New Jersey, appropriating $9 million. 
dollars, therefore, and authorized in the issuance of eight million eight hundred sixty-eight thousand two hundred seventy-one dollar bonds or notes of the township to finance part of the costs thereof. Notice for ordinance 2023 colon 16 was published in the Daily Record, the official newspaper of the township of Pacific Troy held on August 29th, 2023, and introduced at the August 2022nd, August 22nd, 2023 regular meeting. Motion to accept ordinance 2023 colon 16 be heard in their second and final reading by title only by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. DePiro, seconded by Mr. Carifi. Roll call, Mr. Carifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Ms. Sella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. Motion to open public hearing on ordinance 2023, call in 16 by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. DePiro, seconded by Mr. Neglia. Roll call. <clears throat> Mr. Carifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Micella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. The floor is open to the public on this ordinance only. You have five minutes to speak. Seeing no one. Motion to close the public hearing of the ordinance 2023 column 16 by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. DePiro, seconded by Mr. Neglia. Roll call. Mr. Carifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Um, Mr. Piro, Mr. Misala? Yes. Mr. Neglia? Yes. And uh, Ms. Grignani? Yes. Okay, floor is closed. Whereas the above ordinance was read in title on second reading and a hearing held thereon, now therefore be it resolved that said ordinance be passed on final reading and that a notice of final passage of said ordinance be published in the newspaper according to law. Motion to approve the resolution above for ordinance 2023, colon 16 by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. DePiro, seconded by Mr. Negri. A roll call, Mr. Carifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Misella. Yes. Mr. Negri. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. Motion passes. Ordinance 2023-17, bond ordinance providing for various sewer utility capital improvements in it and by the Township of Sipper Troy Hills, the County of Morris, State of New Jersey, appropriating $6,400,000, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $6,400,000 bonds or notes to finance the cost thereof. The notice for Ordinance 2023, colon 17, was published in the Daily Record, the official newspaper of the Township of Precipitate Troy Hills, on August 29, 2023, and introduced at the August 22, 2023 meeting. <coughs> Motion to accept Ordinance 2023-17 be heard in their second and final reading by title only by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Carifi, seconded by Mr. Neglian. Roll call, Mr. Carifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Micella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Mr. Grignani. Yes. Motion to open up the public hearing for this ordinance and this ordinance only. Second. Motion made by Mr. Carifi, seconded by Mr. Neglia. Roll call, Mr. Carifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Micella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Mr. Grignani. Yes. The floor is open to the public on this ordinance only. You have five minutes to speak. Seeing no one. Make a motion to close the public hearing. Second. Motion made by Mr. Carifi, seconded by Mr. Negley. A roll call, Mr. Carifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Mr. Mis I don't see. Yes. No, Mr. DePiro yes. did not. Mr. DePiro did not uh, answer. Yes. 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 No, a thousand times. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Misella. Yes. Mr. Negley. Yes. Mr. Grignani. Yes. Whereas the above ordinance was read in title on second reading and a hearing held thereon, now therefore be resolved that said ordinance be passed on final reading and that said. And that notice of final passage of said ordinance be published in the newspaper according to law. A motion to approve the resolution above for ordinance 2023 colon 17 by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Carifi, seconded by Mr. Neglia. Roll call, Mr. Carifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Mucella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. Motion passes. Ordinance 2023, colon 18, bond ordinance providing for the replacement of various wells for the water utility of the township of Parsippany Troy Hills in the County of Mars, State of New Jersey, appropriating $3,650,000, uh, $3, therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $3,650,000 of bonds or notes to finance the cost thereof. The notice for Ordinance 2023, colon 18, was published in the Daily Record, the official newspaper of the Township of Parsippany Troy Hills, on August 29, 2023, and introduced at the August 20, 2022, uh, 2023 regular meeting. Motion to accept Ordinance 2023, colon 18, be heard in their 
second and final reading by title only made by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Musella, seconded by Mr. Karifi. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. Motion to open the public hearing for Ordinance 2023, colon 18, made by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Musella, seconded by Mr. Karifi. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. The floor is open to the public on this ordinance only. You have five minutes to speak. Seeing nobody come forward, close the public hearing. Second. Motion made by Mr. Musella, seconded by Mr. Karifi. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Mr. Grignani. Whereas the above ordinance was read in title and second reading and a hearing held thereon, now therefore be it resolved that said ordinance be passed on final reading and that notice of final passage of said ordinance be published in the newspaper according to law. Motion to approve the resolution above for ordinance 2023 colon 18 made by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Musella, seconded by Mr. Karifi. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. <clears throat> Ms. Grignani. Yes. Motion passes. Ordinance 2023, colon 19, bond ordinance providing for the replacement of the Lake Hiawatha pump station in and by the Township of Precipitatory Hills in the County of Morris, State of New Jersey, appropriating $1,100,000. Therefore, and authorizing the issuance of $1,100,000 bonds or notes to finance the cost thereof. The notice for Ordinance 2023, colon 19, was published in the daily record of the official newspaper of the Township of Precipitatory Hills on August 29th. 2023 and introduced at the August 22nd, 2023 regular meeting. Motion to accept ordinance 2023 colon 19 to be heard in their second and final reading by title only by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Neglia, seconded by Mr. Karifi. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. <clears throat> yes. Mr. Misella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. Motion to open the public hearing for ordinance 2023 colon 19 by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Neglia, seconded by Mr. Karifi. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Mr. Grignani. Yes. The floor is open to the public. You have five minutes to speak on this ordinance only. Seeing no one. Motion to close the public hearing for ordinance 2023, colon 19, by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Neglia, seconded by Mr. Karifi. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. And Ms. Grignani. Yes. Whereas the above ordinance was read in title on second reading and a hearing held here, her on, thereon. Now, therefore, be it resolved that said ordinance be passed on final reading and that notice of final passage of said ordinance be published in a newspaper according to law. Motion to approve the resolution above for ordinance 2023, colon 19, by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Neglia, seconded by Mr. Karifi. Roll call. Mr. Karifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Mr. Grignani. Yes. Ordinance passes. Non-consent agenda resolutions. Resolution 2023-131, authorizing a shared services agreement with the Parsippany Trails Township Board of Education. Motion to approve the resolution above by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. DePiro, seconded by Mr. Karifi. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Mr. Grignani. Yes. Motion passes. Resolution 2023-132, approving an emergency agreement with electronic drives and controls for the replacement of a failed variable frequency drive to power the pump at potable water well number 21. Motion to approve the resolution by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Karifi. Seconded by Mr. DePiro. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Mr. Grignani. Yes. Motion passes. Mr. Nusella, would you please do 2023-133? Sure. Resolution providing for the combination of, cert of certain bond ordinances and determining the form and other details of the offering of not to exceed 54961000 general obligation bond series 2023 consisting of not to exceed 2020. 22,288,000 general improvement bonds, series 2023, not to exceed $16,387,000 
water utility bonds series 2023 and not to exceed sixteen million two hundred eighty six thousand dollars to sewer utility bonds series 2023 of the township of parsippany troy hills and the county of mars state of new jersey and providing for their sale and determining certain other matters with respect thereto authorizing the sale and issuance of thirty nine million seven hundred and forty five thousand dollars bond anticipation notes series 2023 tax exempt consisting of twelve million seven hundred and sixty nine thousand dollars general improvement notes series 2023 19 million and twenty thousand dollars water utility notes series 2023 and seven million nine hundred and fifty six thousand dollars sewer utility notes series 2023 and authorizing the shit sale and issuance of two million three hundred and sixteen thousand dollars special emergency notes series 2023 federally taxable of the township motion to approve the resolution above by myself second Motion made by Mr. Musella, seconded by Mr. Karifi. Roll call, Mr. Karifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. And Ms. Grignani. Yes. Motion passes. R2023-134, declaring property identified as Block 202, Lots 3.12 and 3.20, and located at 3 Campus Drive and 2 Campus Drive, respectively, as an area in need of redevelopment on a non condemnation basis motion to approve the resolution by myself second motion made by mr musella seconded by mr karifi roll call mr karifi yes mr DePiro. yes mr. Musella. yes mr neglia yes Ms. grignani yes motion passes my consent agenda be it resolved all items listed with an asterisk are routine and non-controversial by the Township Council and will be approved by one motion. There will be no separate discussion of these items unless the Council member so requests, in which case the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered in its normal sequence on the agenda. Motion to approve the consent agenda by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. DePiro, seconded by Mr. Neglia. Roll call. <coughs> Mr. Carifi. Yes. Mr. Okay. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Neglia. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. Motion passed. Mr. Neglia, would you please do payroll? Sure. Approval of payroll and bill list. CFO Leonard Ho recommends authorization for payment. Authorization of payment of September 29, 2023, regular and miscellaneous payroll, estimated at $1,650,000. Payment of bills from voucher, list of 915-23 through 917 2023 is $2,820,509.06. Motion to approve the authorization for payment above by myself. Second. Motion made by Mr. Negria, seconded by Mr. Carifi. Roll call, Mr. Carifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Negria. Yes. Mr. Grignani. Yes. Motion passes. Motion to adjourn. Second. That was real quick, huh? Okay. <laughs> Motion made by Mr. Carifi, seconded by Mr. Musella. Roll call, Mr. Carifi. Yes. Mr. DePiro. Yes. Mr. Musella. Yes. Mr. Negria. Yes. Ms. Grignani. Yes. Okay, we're adjourned. Everybody have a good night. Mr. Homiak.